Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Amen. Amen. Want to say good morning to those who are here. We want to say good morning to those who are in Facebook land. Amen. Amen. We want to welcome you into our Sunday morning worship service here at Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. Amen. We're so grateful and so thankful that you have decided uh, to worship with us on this morning. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. And it clarifies that we should rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. And I don't know about you. Amen. But I'm glad this morning. Amen. God opened my eyes and allowed me to see this beautiful Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. The sun is shining so pretty and beautiful outside. Amen. But but there's a sun that's shining greater than the S-U-N. Amen. Amen. The S-O-N is shining brightly. Amen. And when it's dark outside, the S-O-N is still shining. When it's raining outside, the S-O-N is still shining. Amen. And that's where we got to get to as a people. Amen. Where the S-O-N can shine in our lives. No matter what the circumstances, no matter what the tribulations and troubles are, you got a S-O-N that will never go down. Amen. He went down one time. Amen. And he will not go down again. Amen. Amen. Praise God for Jesus this morning. Amen. Amen. Well, amen. We welcome you here to Pleasant Grove. Amen. The church. Amen. Where well, debt is the only love that we pay. Amen. 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 We pay our debt around here. Amen. We love one another in this place. Amen. 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 We love your Facebook land. Amen. 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 The Bible says, owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth one another hath fulfilled the law. Amen. 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 All right. All right. We're so grateful to have our musicians here. We're so thankful to have, amen, our brother Wesley Hughes, amen, who's going to uh, bless us this morning in song. Amen. And uh, brother Hughes is going to come. He's going to bless us with a song. And then after he blesses us with a song, amen, God will deliver us a word from on high. Amen. From our very own evangelist, Dr. Jacqueline Lacey. Amen. 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 And so we're thankful and grateful, amen, that she is here and able to uh, share with us on this morning. Amen. 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 So after Brother Hughes, after Brother Wesley sings, amen, the next voice you hear will be none other than evangelist, Dr. Jacqueline Lacey. Amen. All right. Here you go, Brother Wesley.
But then I thought about it, wouldn't you know, when I go in there and say, I'm going to step by a bomb. I'm sure. I'll be nervous then. <laughs> so that, that's a great analogy, but I tell you the truth. Um, but God is so good. And, you know, God has a way of confirming what he has given us to, to speak Amen. and to speak to his people. Um, because I had been um, studying. I just studied. You know, just study, just study. And I said, Lord, you're guiding me. And uh, you, you, and I thought he was going to have me to stay in the book of Zechariah because I'm actually taking a, 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 an independent course on the book of Zechariah. And Zechariah is so, so befitting for what is happening today. So when you get a chance, look at that book of Zechariah. There's only 14 chapters in it. But look at it and read it. And then I'm going to tell you, you're going to say, wow, this is so befitting for today. And it was in the Old Testament. But then, but God led me a different way this morning. Um, he led me to the book of 1 Corinthians. And if you have your Bibles this morning, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And, you know, I, I could not understand at first um, why God had me to go back to really teach and to really preach about his resurrection. Um, sometimes, often in this day, when we get so busy looking at the news and and so many things are happening, we sometimes uh, kind of push um, the power of the resurrection back into the back of our minds. Um, but as saints of God, as saints of God, Amen. we must not forget that we must hold on. We must not let go because our labor is not in vain. Amen. And I want to talk, that's going to be the sermon text this morning, title, Hold on, and don't you let go, because your labor is not in vain. Amen. Our labor is not in vain. Amen. It may seem like it sometimes, because our bodies get tired, our minds get tired, but our labor as saints of God, our labor is not in vain. Now, if we are not, on the flip side of that, if we are not, uh, uh, professing Christians and professing saints, professing saints of God, then the labor that we do do will be in vain. It is going to be wasted. But 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 once we become soldiers on the battlefield for the Lord, then whatever we do, we have to do it as unto the Lord. Because guess what? The end result is is our labor will not be in vain. Yeah, We're going to get paid for the labor that we do down here. In this world. And, and guess what? And that pain starts right now. Yeah. Here on this earth. We see some of the fruit um, of our labor here on this earth. But it's nothing going to be in comparison to the fruit that we're going to get in the end. Right. So let's look at 1 Corinthians 15. And we're going to start at verse 50. And we're going we're gonna to read through verse 58. It reads, Now this I say, <clears throat> brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit corruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Mm -hmm. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, Ooh, then shall he then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Yeah. And you do know that death is going to be the last victory. You do know that. Yeah. That's one of the battles, okay? O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, Hades, where is your victory? And then it goes on to say, the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, this is Paul, to, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And this is the hanging scripture, the focus scripture for today. Therefore, then this is what Paul does. He commissions the church at Corinth. He says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, 
immovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Yeah. Okay, now steadfast. What is steadfast? Steadfast is 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 an, an easy word. Actually, it's actually a compound word. You got stead, and then you got fast. Okay, but steadfast means stability having stability having stability and from this point of reference we're talking about having stability in faith mm -hmm. having stability in our practices of being a christian oh, in our God. practices of being a saint of god we have come to a point in time where our faith is being tried now more than ever Man. yes it is yes, yes it is, is. We, 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 we're on the fire. Yeah. We're on the fire. Okay? We're on the fire. And it's not long until we really become under the fire of persecution wow. for our profession. Whether it's, um, you know, whether our faith is being tried by, by you know, by, by a nagging spouse or, 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 or rebellious child. You know, or, or, or we're working under a boss that's uncaring, mm -hmm. you know, or sometimes we have to face family members who really don't care about our faith a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes they say things like, you know, uh, you holier than thou. Uh, you think you know it all. Uh, but, but that's a form of persecution. Yeah. That's a form of persecution. Yeah. And back to the uncaring boss, when they know that they see Jesus in you, oh. then they do everything to try to hinder you and try to beat you down. Amen. But you know what? That's a form of persecution. Amen. And then the deliberately rebellious child, you know, the devil has a way of getting to us through our closest loved ones. Yeah. And, but you know what? But we still must hold on. Amen. We cannot let go. Because know ye that your labor is not in vain. Amen. And when we labor in prayer for our children, and when yeah. we intercede for our children, and when we intercede for this nation, our labor of prayer is not in vain. Amen. So whatever, whatever trial you, know, you may be facing as professing Christians, the most thing that we must remember is, is that we must continue to hold up this blood-stained banner. Oh, yeah. And this oh, yeah. blood-stained banner is the banner of faith. Yeah. And where does our faith begin? The blood-stained banner is Jesus Christ. Yeah. Because we got to first believe that he is, yeah. that he does exist. Yeah. And that, that he's a rewarder of those who diligently, what? See, See him. him. Yeah. And this yeah. is the generation that seeks the face right. of the Lord. Yeah. Do you hear me? There are going to be people in this day and time that uh, if they have never sought the Lord before, then guess what's going to happen? Times are going to get so hard until they're going to be seeking the face of the Lord. Right. And they're going to be seeking a word from the Lord. Amen. And there's going to come a day when they won't be able to even hear a word from the Lord. So God is saying, write the word of God on the table of thine heart. On the table of your heart yeah. and upon your doorpost so that people will know know the God that you serve. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Then it says, we must forever remember what Christ annulled at the cross mm -hmm. when he sacrificed his life for wretched souls mm -hmm. such as ours. Right. So, Lord, I'm wondering now, why am I talking about the resurrection? Most pastors would preach this sermon at a funeral. That's right. That's right. Most pastors would preach this sermon at a funeral. Mm -hmm. But Paul the Apostle was not attending a funeral when he scripted the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians. He did this in remembrance so they could remember where they was going, where they were going. Yeah. Okay? Where they were going. Because at this point in time, there were a lot of heresies. A lot of uh, false prophets telling them that Jesus Christ was not raised from the dead. Right. Amen. You know, they were trying to flip the story, flipping the coin, flipping the coin, and trying to confuse the people. Yeah. But then Paul sat down and he put his pen to the paper and he gave them a hope yeah. that they, he helped them remember that hope. Yeah. And that hope yeah. is yeah. in Jesus Christ. Yeah. And he helped them to remember that the hope that you now have latched on to, you're going to gain that hope through eternal life. Amen. So Paul had to remind them 
that um, Jesus Christ did die. Yes, he did die. He was crucified on the cross. And yes, he was buried, but he did not stay there. Amen. He did raise. Yes, he, he got up out of that grave. Yeah. He got up out of that grave yeah. just for you and me yeah. to let us know that uh, he had gone to prepare a place. But see, that grave, when he got up out of that grave, see, it, it, it sealed everything at that point. When he got up out of that grave, it sealed every promise that God the Father had That's made right. to, to us right. in the days of old right. up until the New Testament. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. It sealed everything. Amen. So Paul starts this 15th chapter by first reminding the church at Corinth of the resurrected Christ who became that sacrificial lamb. Well. Paul also reminds the, Christ, the, the Corinthians that it is the resurrection of Christ by which our faith is made reality. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't believe in the resurrection, church, then guess what's going to happen? Then we don't have faith. That's right. We don't have faith in Jesus Christ because we got to first believe that he did die right. and that he did bear the, bear, bear the sins of this world and that he was buried and that he did get up to die no more. Amen. Amen. So, how we regard death the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ determines our level of faith. Well, this determines our level of commitment. Mm, mm. Nice little, this determines our level of faith and our level of commitment. Yeah, well, it does not amaze me that even in the church today, there are still people who do not yet believe. That's well, there are still people that we come to church with every Sunday. They are still trying to get there. Yep. Some are moving in the direction of belief. That's right. Some are moving there. Mm -hmm. Okay? And the reason why some are moving there is because they 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 find it really, really hard um, with, with, with just just day-to-day -day trials and tribulations. They're, they're asking the question, well, if God is so good, why am I suffering? Why am I going through what I'm going through? That's because they haven't come to a realization that uh, this, this is the way of triumphs. Yeah. Our faith is tried by our what? Triumphs. Yeah. It's over there in the book of Romans. So, and then, you know, while others are simply just pretending. They're just going through the most. Yeah. They don't really believe, you know. And let me give you a prime example. When they get sick or something happens in their family, they don't believe that God can totally deliver. Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't believe that. They'll, they'll say, yeah, but, but, it's, but it's cancer. Mm. You know cancer is a booger bath. Hmm. Yeah, it's a booger bath. But then what is Jesus to you? Amen. What have you been professing? Now, he may not choose to, to, to heal it, That's right. but it's not because he can. Awesome. See what I'm saying? He yeah. might not choose to heal that cancer. Yeah. He might not choose to heal that diabetic yeah. two, that diabetic yeah. one, but he's able to do it. Yeah. He's able to do it. And that's why our faith is connected to the cross. Yeah. Then there are those who fully believe. You can't tell them nothing. They just big headed. They say, okay, God can do anything. Yes, yes, I read this Bible. I believe every word this Bible says. I he can do it all. I just believe it. Well. And they are the and they are the profound saints without reservation of the death, the burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. There's power in the resurrection. Yes, yes it is. is. Because everything was sealed. Everything was sealed. For good, every promise that God made was sealed. So Paul's commission to the church at Corinth is to truly get excited about the resurrection. Yeah. That's this chapter 15. That's, that's, that's what he wants them to get excited about the resurrection. Well, you know, well, why would Paul still be reminding them of the resurrection? Because there were still, we have already said this, false teaching that yeah. Christ didn't raise from the dead. Yeah. And then, you know, and, and sad to say, there are people who are still today, still right. saying Christ did not raise from, did not, was not raised from the dead. Huh. That's still going on. Now, you might not hear it in your, in your circle, but it's still going on. Mm -hmm. 
It's still going on. There is a commercial on TV, and it's very suave. It's very, very, it sneaks up on you, but it's an atheist commercial. I don't know how many of you all have ever heard that commercial before, but I catch it. And, uh, and, and, and this, this man is actually sitting up there saying power, power to the devil worshipers. Power to the devil worshipers. But, you know, but we have to be, because the devil is subtle in everything that he does. <clears throat> but Paul assures us that the risen Christ is our hope. So Paul asks this question in 1 Corinthians 15, 12. Now, if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead. And this is all we've been preaching. This is Paul is saying this. This is what the apostles have been preaching. This is what um, over, over 500 disciples who saw him uh, after he had been buried, after he had been you know, raised from the dead, saw him. He said, now if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? No, he asked that question, and that's a powerful question because that powerful that question right there hangs on the Old Testament. You do know that, don't you? Mm -hmm. I don't think Paul really realized the power of that asking at that time. <laughs> then Paul comes quickly with an answer to his own question in verse thirteen. He says, "But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen." I am reminded. Of the Shunammite woman found in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse, starting at verse 8 all the way through verse 37. Read it sometimes. Yeah. When her son actually died, and this was the son that God gave her through the prophet Elisha. And that's right, Pastor. The nickname is this is a promise to son. Because she was so good to Elisha the prophet whenever yeah. he came through. She she made sure he was fed. She yeah. made sure he was he was bedded, you know, down, you know, had his upper room and a room by himself. So because this is the man of God, so he can pray and he can yeah. meditate. Yeah. He can be away from all distractions. And she made sure of that. And because she made sure of that, of his comfort, mm -hmm. being the man of God, then he asked uh, Gehazi, he said, Gehazi, which was his helper, he said, go and ask uh, the Shunammite woman, what is it that she wants? Mm. What is it that she wants? And so when Gehazi came back, Gehazi said, well, she doesn't have a son. You know, bless her with that son. Mm. God, bless her with that son. Mm. And let me tell you something. <laughs> but when God blesses us with something yes, and with so. people, it doesn't mean that an end will not come. That's right. So we have to understand that. It does it might not last forever. That's right. That's right. So but we have to take joy in, in the wild that we have it and appreciate it. So this young this this lady, the Shonamite woman, took pride in this boy. But one day this baby died. This boy died. Well. He died. And it was a sad day yeah. for her. But you know what? Come she on, didn't stay sad very long. Right, she on. said, get my horse. Yeah. She said, get my horse. Yeah. She said, I'm going to go back and find this man yeah. who, 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 who opened the pathway up for me to yeah. get this boy. I'm going to hold this man of God accountable. Yeah. See, that, that's, that's what she did. Not so much to, 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 to just get him and bring him down, but she said, I'm going to go back to the source. That's it. And she went back to the source because the source was connected to Jesus, that's to it. God the that's Father, it. the all-powerful, the almighty. And so when she got back, so when she, when she got him and he came, and this is the one time Elisha, Elisha, I tell you, he laid on that boy. And he blew the breath of life into that boy. Yes, and you know, and I just and I tell you now that that was powerful. Yeah. But then, but then, but then he 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 came back. Yeah. He said, he said, he said, come. He said, you know, the boy came, he came back. But moving, moving on further, up to the New Testament, Lazarus was resurrected from the dead. Yeah. By Jesus Christ himself, wasn't he? Yeah. Okay, Lazarus was, and all Jesus did was spoke some. They just spoke, spoke. All he said was, "Come forth, Lazarus, come forth." Yeah. And when he spoke those words, came Lazarus, the brother of Mar Mary, Martha, he came forth. He came forth. Came forth. Lord, and 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 one more resurrected body is the daughter of Jairus. Yeah. Jairus's daughter. Well. 
while Jesus was 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 teaching, you know, Jesus held he went he went he held her by, by her hand and said, "Little girl, get up." Ah. He said, "Little girl, get up." Oh, and the twelve year old got up from her deep sleep. <laughs> yeah. Got up from her deep sleep. Ooh, you hear me? God. And then Jesus, and you know, and this lets me know because I'm I'm a very detailed type person. When Jairus' daughter was raised from the dead, after Jesus raised her from the dead, you know, uh, when she got up, Jesus understood it and had a heart for children. Let me tell you why. Because the first thing he said to the mother, the father, to Jairus and his, and, and his wife, give us something to eat. He said, give us something to eat. Mm -hmm. So that ought to tell us something about the kind of God that yeah. we serve. Yes. But there is a big difference in the resurrection of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus was resurrected, but guess what? He never died again. Huh. He was resurrected. Yeah. And that's right. When people say, well, he wasn't the first to be resurrected. No, he wasn't. Mm -hmm. But he was the first to be resurrected, but didn't have to die again. You see, Lazarus had to die again. You see, the son of the Shunammite woman had to die again. And you see, uh, 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 the little girl, Jairus' daughter, was resurrected, but all three of them had to die again. But when Jesus came on the scene, and when he was resurrected, he did not die again. You see, when Jesus rose from the dead, let me tell you something, things happen when Jesus rose from the dead. Now, when these, when these other three that, that I cited rose from the dead, not really much happened other than rejoicing. You know, that, okay, we're back, we got, we got them back. You know, to, 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 to be with us and to be by us. Mm -hmm. But when Jesus Christ was resurrected from the dead, things happened. What are some of the things that happened? For one thing, the devil got awfully mad. Yep. He got real mad when he rose from the dead. And then another thing that happened when Jesus rose from the dead, he got up with all power yes, he in did. his hands. Yes, he, he got up with all power in his hands. And that's why the devil was still mad. And you know, as the old folks said, he got madder and madder and madder. Mm -hmm. And so on down the line, it says, another thing that happened, it says, all believers became the righteousness of God. Yes, well. We were no longer lingering out wondering if we would be righteous or not. Because when Jesus rose from that grave, yes. guess what? He sealed us with his righteousness yes. Yes. to them that believe. And then not only did those three things happen, he gave us a comforter to preserve us until the day of his return. Until the day of his return. For the work that was started in us, that has begun in us, God will perform it until the day of his return. Yes. So his work is going to continue to be in us. And then on top of that, he gave us eternal life. Eternal life was sealed. Mm -hmm. Most people get eternal life mixed up with everlasting life. Yeah. But eternal life, the Bible says, everywhere it references Jesus in this Bible, it says eternal life. It never says everlasting life. It says eternal life. Okay? And then, on, and then we go on down. It says, uh, this, this is another thing that happened when he died. You know, we now have a blessed hope. We have a blessed hope. And I thought about this song, it's this hymn. It says, my hope is built on nothing less but Jesus Christ and his righteousness. And I tell you, that blessed hope, there's something to hang on to. And then on top of that, we gain eternal life. For to live is Christ and to die is gain. We gain eternal life. And we're in a day and time now that we have to focus on the end result. We have to focus on what God has already prepared for us. Because if you are a prepared person, then you're going to go to a prepared place. That's it. That's he promised it. That, that he would do that. Mm -hmm. And I believe that there is a prepared place for them yes. that died in the Lord Jesus. Yes, yes. Lord, yes. And aren't you glad that nobody can determine where you go? Yes. Aren't you glad? They may try to. Yeah. They may try to. They may base it upon, you know, you heard my feeling one time. Oh, yeah. You're going to go to hell. Mm -hmm. You're going to hell. You know? sure but, you, but you don't know. You don't know where people are going. And that's the mystery that Jesus Christ would never reveal to any of us. That's right. It's not going to be revealed to us because it's not up to us to put anybody in a hell or a hell. But it is up to us to help them get to heaven. That's right. That's right. That's the responsibility that we have. We got to help them get to heaven. 
Amen. Amen. But now is the time. Now is the time to seek, to seek God like never before. Mm -hmm. Now's the time to just seek him like never before. Because you know what? We are living in a day now where we can be here this moment and be gone no, the next moment. That's right. So we that's have to right. be seeking the face of God like never before. That's right. Paul is saying to us, to us, as he said to the church at Corinth in this chapter, is to be steadfast, immovable. Mm -hmm. Don't move. Don't I don't move. care what comes your way. Always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. And I want you to put that scripture before you at all times. I want you to remember that particular scripture. I really do. I want you to remember that. Because why? Because I don't care what you're going through. I, I, I really don't care what you have been through. But all I do know is this, is that you should count it all joy. joy. All I know is this, is that I am going to count it all joy. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and the thing I want to tell you is this, you better hold on to the promises of God. That's right. Hold on to the promises of God. Yes, Lord. Because everything God promised is sure to come to pass. Precept upon precept. And, and if you are not grounded in the faith, if you are not grounded in the faith, then it's time you let go of whatever is hindering you. Whatever is hindering you, whatever is in your way, please, by all means, by all means, let it go. Let it go. If it's sin, let it go. If it's a grudge, let it go. Yes. If it's anything that's not of God, let it go. Because God is still working miracles. He's still working miracles. Yes, he is. God is still in control. Yes. God is all knowing. Mm -hmm. And God is ever present. Ever present. He's ever present. Ever present. So why not think about the end result? Mm -hmm. I know uh, we, are, we are people of present times. We live in the present. We live for right now for the most part. But as saints of God, we have to focus on the end. Yeah, that's right. Because this world is not our home. Yeah, that's right. We're not, we're not made here to stay. Amen. So yes, we may get weary along the way. Mm. We may get weary along the way. We may feel like, you know, just throwing in the towel and saying, I give up. I give up. Mm -hmm. I give up. You know, there's nothing in it for me. Well. We get that way sometimes. But Christ never said that we, we would not feel down. He never said that we would not be down and out. But the one thing that we must hang on to is you can win for losing. That's right. You know, the old saying is, the old cliche is, is I can't win for losing. Mm -hmm. But we're the opposite as saints of God. We can win for okay. losing. That's right. Why can we win for losing? Because to live is Christ and, and to die, die is, is gain. Amen. Amen. But remember, One thing about this journey, huh. we can have one foot in and have one foot out. See, a lot of us want to have one foot in the church and have one foot out. That's right. You cannot enjoy <laughs> and partake of, of, of what's in the world mm. and expect to have joy and everlasting, and that, you know, and everlasting joy on this earth and then eternal life after this earth. We just, there's an unbalancement there. So we have to understand, we have to get our ducks in a row. Now, am I saying that we're, gonna, we're, not, we're never going to make a mistake? That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that we're going to live a better life, a better prepared life, so that we are ready to be in that kingdom with the Lord of eternity. One thing about this journey, we have to understand that when we started this journey, we started this journey within mind. For God I live, and for God I will die. If we keep that in our minds, if we keep the why in our minds, for God I live, and for God I will die. Which means that we are willing to make a stand no matter what. 
which means that we won't be a chameleon when we are with one group of people or with one person at this time, and then with another group of people, we are somebody else. Mm -hmm. Be who you are and stay who you are in Christ. Stand for what is right. That's right. Stand for what is right. Because guess what, over in the book of Revelations, it says, these are they who have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. These are they yeah. who have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. These are they who have been through trials and tribulations. Well, These are they who have come over hills and mountains. Yeah, yeah. These are they who have walked up rough and, 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 and tough roads. These are they who have had to be faced with things people yeah, say to them yeah, and being things yeah. people do to them. And they didn't say a word. But these are they yes. who have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And I want to take as many people with me as I possibly can. I really yes. do. I really do. I want to take as many people as I possibly can. So, Facebook land, my friends out there in Facebook, and I have a lot of friends out there in Facebook. I do. And you know, I preach every time I go on there. Uh, I'll be doing the show, but I preach every time I go on there. But know this, that only what we do for Christ is going to last. That's right. Because I want you and everybody to go to heaven with me. Yeah. I really do. Now, on that note, God bless you and keep you, and I love you, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about me loving you. Have a great one, and I love you. Amen. 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 Bless. Amen. Amen. And amen. 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 What an encouraging word to let you know that your labor is not in vain. Amen. In the Lord. Amen. That, that, that's right, brother. Your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Our labor in this old world for on these jobs. You can labor on a job for, for 24 years, uh, uh, 11 months, and, and 29 days. And you get to 20, right at your 25 mark, and they'll tell you we don't need you no more. Yes, they will. And all that labor, sister, was in vain. Amen. You labor in a relationship, gave your money, gave your time, brought children into the world. And for no reason, they decided to walk out and leave you. Yes. All that labor was in vain. But when you labor in the Lord, when you labor on the battlefield for saving souls, when you labor in his vineyard, amen, that labor will not be in vain. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we, Sister Lacey, just want to encourage you and we want to support her and encourage you, book face land. Your labor won't be in vain in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Don't worry about this pandemic and everything else that's going on. Make sure you're laboring for the Lord. Make sure you're still spreading the good news of the gospel that Jesus is not dead that he is a resurrected savior. And if you're laboring there, amen, you will get a soul or two, amen. And that was her prayer. She wanted to take as many as she could with her. And guess what? So does Finch. Amen. I want as many that will go to go with me, amen. 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 And so for those in Facebook land who have not, amen, made that commitment, for those who have been laboring, but the labor has been on temporal things, your labor has been on things of this world. We want to invite you, amen, and encourage you to accept Jesus Christ and begin to labor with him and for him. Amen. And all you have to do is confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Amen. And believe in your heart that he is resurrected, that God raised him from the dead. The Bible says you shall be saved. Amen. Amen. And then your labor begins in laboring with the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. to reach and save as many lost souls as you can. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so if you have not accepted Jesus Christ, please don't let uh, this opportunity, don't let this, this day pass by. Amen. Amen. Labor for Jesus. And we promise you there is a reward. Amen. It's better than anything that this earth has to offer. Amen. It's an eternal reward. Amen. 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 To live is Christ. 
and to die is gain. Amen. 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 We want to thank, amen, evangelist Dr. Lacey for, amen, sharing those words of encouragement, that good news to let us know, amen, that our labor for the Lord, even when when folks don't accept what we're saying, amen, when they turn their backs and act like they don't hear us, amen, if we're laboring for Jesus, that's all right, amen, it won't be in vain, amen, our job is to just drop that seed in the ground, amen, amen. and we, let's, let's keep planting, y'all, let's keep planting, amen, amen, we thank, amen, uh, uh, Brother Wesley, amen, who blessed us in song service, Amen. We thank God for our musicians. Amen. Amen. Thank God for our deacon, our secretary. Amen. Our other evangelists here who, who are here to support. Amen. We just thank God for all of you. And we thank you um, in Facebook land. Amen. We pray that you have been blessed uh, by the service on today. And we want to encourage you to go out. Amen. And continue to labor. Amen. But make sure your labor is in the Lord. Amen. 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 If all hearts and minds are satisfied, amen, we will close. Amen. This is our prayer. Father God, it is again in the most precious name of your son, Jesus the Christ. Father, that we come to the close of another service. Oh, Father, we come saying thank you for what our eyes have seen. Thank you for what our ears have heard. And most importantly, Lord, thank you for what our hearts have felt. We thank you, Father, for your preached word on today, Lord, that has told us, Father, that our labor in you, Father, will not be in vain. We thank you for the encouragement, Lord, because even your saints, your, your most devoted uh, uh, servants on this side get weary sometime. Amen. But, but I heard you say, let us not get weary in our well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And Father, we thank you for letting us know, Father, that if we keep sowing, if we keep laboring, Father, we don't have to worry about fainting, Father. Amen. You're going to reward us, amen, in due season. And Father, we just thank you for all of those who are here. We thank you for those who are viewing in Facebook land. We thank you, Father, for your church, your universal church. We thank you, Lord, that the word of God is able to go forth into many households, even through a pandemic, Lord. We thank you for giving us this opportunity to still proclaim the gospel of your son, Jesus the Christ. Father, we ask right now, Lord, that as we leave this place, but we never leave your presence, we ask, Father, please, Lord, don't leave us. Please. Amen, Father. Continue with us. We know we're hard-headed. We know we get beside ourselves. We know we burden you, Father, but please forgive us. Don't leave us, Lord. We need you on this journey. Father, we just thank you, Lord, and we love you. And now, may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his precious Holy Spirit rest, rule, abide with us henceforth and forevermore. Let us all say, Amen. 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 God bless you.